In this video, I will be showing you how to use SheCam and the initial setup of SheCam and different settings you can do. First, you're going to want to open up SheCam. After you open up SheCam, you will see this maroon box. This is your table's cutting material. If you go to the top right, you can see it's 48 by 96. So this is the material loaded on your table basically, which is a 4 by 8 sheet. If you have a 4 by 4 table, or 5 by 10, or 5 by 5, or etc., you go to Options, Job Options, and adjust your material size. I'm just going to keep it at 48 by 96 for 4 by 8. You can also adjust your rapid clearance. Rapid clearance is the clearance that the torch raises up between cuts. The higher your rapid clearance is, the higher your torch will rise. Mine is set at 0 0.8, so the torch will rise up 0 0.8 inches between cuts. The advantages of this is when you're cutting out small parts or letters and they tend to tip sideways, if your rapid clearance is too low, transitioning between cuts your torch may strike the letter and put everything off whack. So a higher rapid clearance of around 0.8 is a perfect one to cut with. You can also go to options, machine. Machine type will most likely always be jet cutting. Unless if you decide to put a milling or a spindle or router on your table, then you do rotary cutting but we're going to keep it at jet cutting. Your pulse processor will most likely always be the Premier Plasma CNC floating head pulse processor. Now if you want to bypass your floating head and just cut by zeroing out your torch on material and going from there, you can switch to the Mach 3 Plasma. But we're going to keep this as the Premier Plasma floating head. You also have your working envelope which is 48 by 96 and your table display which is 48 by 96 you should all say the same for whichever size table you have now we're gonna start by creating some simple tools I'll click right here to create a new jet cutting tool this tool right here is basically like a tool in your toolbox basically a 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter, 9 sixteenths wrench this is going to be a tool that tells Mach 3 how fast to cut your pierce delay, your feed rate your kerf width, your plunge rate I will go over what each item is we're going to click here because we did not want it to automatically generate a name we want to create our own name so I'm going to type in 12 gauge for 12 gauge material. Our kerf width is a width that the plasma cutter cuts out while it's cutting. And standard for most plasma cutters is 0 0.0591. Our feed rate is how fast the plasma cutter is going to cut out that material. For 12 gauge, on my plasma cutter, I have a hypertherm 65 that I use and also an 85. I usually cut out around 200 inches per minute. My pierce delay, I usually run zero and has always been fine. Our pierce height is the height of the plasma cutter when it pierces through the material. 0 0.1181 is a standard and plunge rate is how fast the z-axis moves down. 40 inches per minute is fine. And our cut height is a height that our table cuts after it has pierced and go down to cut height. We're going to make the type of plasma cutting tool, rename it 12 gauge, and save. So basically now we have a 12 gauge tool. Now I'm going to make a tool, it's called 12 gauge small holes. For any plasma cutter, when you're cutting 12 gauge or other materials, it is best to cut them at a little bit of a slower speed to get a more accurate and fine cut. This will be a tool number two, type plasma, 
curve width is going to be the same. Our feed rate we'll just put at 90 and everything else can stay the same. And we'll just hit OK. So now we have two tools. As you do different materials you'll get more tools. We're going to go to File, New Part, and this is going to bring a part in that we made in a previous video in VACAD. Now we're going to go to our desktop. and find their file we made. We're going to do file name, we're going to switch it to DXF files, and now we can see our DXF test part is right here. We can open that up now. We're going to do scaling in inches, drawing position at the bottom left of the table, hit OK. Now we can see our part. Now if we zoom out we can see the actual size of the part on a 4x8 sheet of metal. You will see that Mach 3 is already identified, the inside and the outside layer. But I like to go ahead and make my own outside layer just to confirm everything. So I'm going to go over here to Edit Contours, go to the outside, right click, move to layer, a new layer. I'm going to name this layer outside. Hit OK. Now for my operations, I'm going to go to Contour Method inside offset layer layer 1 because we know our layer 1 is our inside parts I'm going to do 12 gauge our feed rate for the inside I'm just going to put it at 150 we're going to do lead in and lead out 0 0.2 and 0 0.2 you will see that here in a minute I like to do loop sharp corners also as a triangle and a loop size of around 0.375 is good. Hit OK. Now you can see right here our lead in and lead out of 0.2 and our lead in and lead out of 0.2 here. Now we're going to do the outside. So we're going to go here and do create a new jet cutting operation again. Outside layer this time. Layer outside. And tool we're going to use our 12 gauge tool at 200 inches per minute and a lead in and a lead out of 0.2 now let's say these start points are not where you want them to be if you go up here to the S to edit start points and click that whichever inside or outside you're on that is what determines on what you can edit so if we do outside it's only going to let us move the outside offset for starting for our starting point. If we try inside it won't let us do nothing. We have to click on inside and then we can move it around. Now let's say on this part we want to create 20 of them. We're going to do that by going to the nesting tool. Click on nesting then hover over our part and hit array of parts We're going to do uh, four columns and five rows. Now you can see when we did that, all these are all overlapping, which is no good when you're cutting out. So we're going to go up here to the undo button. Now we're going to re right click on it, array of parts. But this time we're going to do part spacing at 0 0.25 and 0.25. And actually right here you will see X and Y. So it's going to take up two, 25 inches on the X axis and 21 inches on the Y axis. So after we've done that we can hit OK. Now we can see the parts are spaced further enough apart that they won't interfere with each other. And you can theoretically fill this whole page up. Now let's say you don't want this inside to fall out and you want it to be left in by a tab or two. Up here at the top you will see edit tabs. This is going to allow us to break this cut path 
to create a tab. So now you can see we have broken the cut path. So now the table is going to cut like this, stop, lift up, come back down, and cut from here to here, and then continue, and leave this as like a bind material to keep the, this part inside. Now, after that has all been done, you will see these tools up here. If you unselect them, you will see stuff starts to disappear. This is a common problem when people accidentally hit these and all of a sudden everything disappears and their parts look different. So let's remember about these. Now that that is all done, up on the top left we can go to job report. Job report is pretty cool because it will show you how long it will take to cut out. So it looks like our inside offset is going to have an operation time of 18.58 seconds of cutting, 3 pierces and 17 inches of cut. And our outside tool is going to take 9.8 seconds to cut out and a cut distance of 20.28 inches. This is very good for judging on how much to charge for a job. Now if you want to export this to Mach 3 to start cutting, you simply just need to go to the P for post processing. I'm going to save this as a test part on the desktop as G code and hit save. Post processing complete. Hit OK. Now the next video will show Mach 3 and how to use it.